Hi everyone, it's Make It Month 7 and this month we're looking at cold connections. Cold connections is the term used for joining things together um, without the use of heat. So with cold methods rather than hot methods using blow torches at soldering, things like that. So it's a technique in its own right um, and it can be done for decorative effect but it's also brilliant for times when you just can't use heat because the things that you're wanting to attach together just wouldn't withstand the heat of the blowtorch. So it might be that you're attaching sort of plastic or fabric elements to your piece um, or maybe you've got a stone or something similar set in a piece and you need to make an adjustment and you can't get the stone out so using heat just wouldn't be an option. But like I say it's a technique in its own right as well so it's brilliant to know a range of techniques if you don't want to invest in a soldering setup maybe for space insurance or financial reasons um, or you just don't feel safe having flames in your house. So I hope you enjoy this month. Um, I hope you make some stuff at home. Let me know how you get on. Cold connections can be as simple as popping a hole in something and threading wire onto it, similar to these little earrings. Um, so with these, I've just literally popped two holes in, one end of the wire is bent to attach it onto the shape, and one end has a little jump loop through it to attach the ear wire through. So I'm not gonna make a pair of these this month because these are very similar to what we did um, in Make It Month One. So if you want to look at things like this, you can go back to January's videos and have a little little peek at them. Um, but there are Really simple, really fun to do, you hardly need any tools or materials and they look really nice on as well. Um, but we're going to be primarily focusing on slightly more advanced cold connection techniques such as doing rivets um, and tabs. So I'm going to start off by riveting this little ring together. You can make rivets from wire or tubing. So tubing looks a lot like wire but it's got the hole all the way through it. Um, and the way you do it is you cut the wire or tubing so it's a tiny bit longer than the stack of things that you're trying to rivet together and then you hit it with a hammer so that the, the top and bottom of the tubing splays out and that's what grips the layers together. So the really important thing is it doesn't matter if you choose wire or tubing, um, it just gives a visual difference. What does matter is the hole that you drill it needs to be as precise to the wire or tubing that you're using as possible because if it's too big, even by a little fraction of a mil, you're gonna to have to splay that wire or tubing so much more for it to be able to fill that gap and hold your layers together um, nice and tightly. So you really do want a really nice snug fit. And you can always um, drill it a little bit tight and then file it. The ring that I'm going to rivet is this little wrapped ring band. So it's just a piece of silver. It's about 1.5 mil thick bar and it's just wrapped around on itself so it's not soldered it's just overlapped and the reason I'm going to rivet it is because it came out some really nice colours. Now these colours just came about because I had um, darkened it with liver of sulphur previously and then I went to anneal it to soften it a bit more um, just so that I could get it to overlap a tiny bit more and get a nice shape on it and in doing that I got these gorgeous colours which remind me of like an African print or something I'm going to see it here um, I would like to maintain those so if I was to solder this together I would lose all of that so I'm going to rivet it in place so I have a sharpie to mark where I want the rivet to go when I do my rivet I just need to make sure I get it so that it's going to grab both bits that I'm trying to join together. So in this case, the top of the ring band and the bottom of the ring band that's slotting under it. Because if I put the hole right on the edge, it would burst through the top of the wire and therefore would be gripping. And vice versa, if I put the hole a bit further back, it would burst through the bottom or miss the bottom layer of silver and would grab it. So I need to make sure that I've got enough of an overlap and put the dot in the right place to drill so that the width of whatever wire or tubing I'm using is going to be able to pass through both layers without bursting through any of the sides. And then, before I drill it, I'm going to centre punch where I want the hole to be. So I'm going to take my ring mandrel, slide it onto there, take my centre punch, put it on the dot and give it a whack with a hammer. I've decided I'm going to use this bit of copper tubing. So like I say, it's so important that the hole I drill is pretty much exactly the same size as the tubing or the wire 
that you're going to use. So I've chosen this draw bit, it looks the same to me, and I'm going to drill a hole through my ring. I'm using my granddad's old hand drill. You could use an electric drill, any drill that you're used to using is fine. It's just really important that you secure your work safely while you're drilling, especially if it's a power drill. Um, and also, it's a good idea to put eye protection on. So I'm going to stand up so that I can do this nice and straight. I've got the ring secured on my bench peg. You may also need to drill a pilot hole with a smaller drill bit. I'm just going to do this until it goes all the way through the ring. My camera cut out halfway filming the drilling because it was too hot in here for it to record. It's so hot today, <laughs> absolutely melting. Anyway, I've drilled the hole through and it's a tiny bit too tight, which is what I wanted. Always better to be too tight than too loose. So I've got a round needle file and I'm going to put that in the hole and I'm just going to file until the tube fits perfectly might take a little minute but I know that the next drill bit up would be too big so it's a lot better to do this so close just make sure when you do this you're not scratching the inside of your ring band with the point of the file or your finger for that matter it fits. So that's on there, it's nice and tight. So what I need to do now is first off just check that the end of your tube or your wire is nice and flat. If it's not flat you need to file it so it's nice and perfectly flat. And just remember when you file metal, similar to when you file your nails, you end up with these little burrs around the outside. I'm to find my nail file. And those little burrs that end up splaying over the edge could cause the, um, the wire tube not to fit through the hole anymore. So it's always good just to remove those little burrs. You can do that with the file that you filed with, or I like to use a little nail buffer file. So just getting rid of any little raggy bits. Then what you're going to do is you're going to slot it onto your stack, and I'm going to mark it where I want to cut it with a sharpie. Now there's various ways you could do this bit because the length needs to be exactly the right length for the stack of things that you're trying to join together. So it's normally it needs to be a millimetre um, wider either side, so two mil longer than the depth of your stack. Um, so you could get a pair of calipers or a vernier gauge and measure that nice and precisely um, or you could do it with a ruler or you could do what I do which is just do it by eye, I could do most things. Um, so I've got a skinny sharpie and I'm just going to make a little mark, it's poking just under a millimetre above the silver on the inside and I'm going to make a little mark just a little millimetre below the silver on the other side and then I'm going to cut it. It's really important, you need to cut it with a saw, not your shears, because the shears will crush the tubing or nip the ends. Okay, so I've got my tubing on my wire. It is exactly the same thickness as the hole that I've drilled through the stack of things that I'm going to attach together. And I'm going to cut it, I'm going to sneeze. Okay, so I've got my tubing on my wire um, and I've drilled a hole exactly the same thickness as the tubing. So it's a really nice snug fit. And I've made a little mark so I'm going to cut it down 2 mil longer than the depth of the things that I'm going to um, rivet together. Remember, you've got to use a saw, not your shears, because you don't want to crush or nip the ends of your neck. 
there we go so I've got my little bit and I've cut it on a very slight wonk so I'm going to put it in my mitre jig to file it flat now if you haven't got a mitre jig get one they're amazing um, you can get them for the ones that are about £30 are fine um, you can get them online but if you haven't got one you can do this bit by hand just file it by eye or um, you can get tube cutters which would make life even easier again but I use a mitre jig all the time so I'm just having it so that the wire, the tubing sorry, is just poking out I'm going to tighten this off and I'm going to file it completely flat to this little tool and then I know that the ends of my tubing are completely flat so I've got my little bit of tubing, I'm going to slot it through the holes and then I'm going to slot it onto a ring mandrel if you were doing this with something that was flat, so flat layers rather than a curved domed layer, you would just pop it on your steel block rather than onto a ring mandrel. And what we need to do now is this little bit of tubing is the exact thickness of the hole. So what I need to do is I need to splay out this top circumference to make it wider so that it can't fall through the hole anymore. And there's various ways to do that, but I'm going to do that with the cheapest of cheap budget hammers just to show that you don't need anything special and I'm going to start with a cross pane hammer so the one with the wedgy side on it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hammer the top of the tubing just little taps I'm going to go one way and then I'm going to do a cross shake and go the other way now obviously it's a lot easier if you stand up to do this but I can see the camera better so I'm like this okay. Just by doing that cross shape, what I'm doing is I'm stretching the wall, the top wall of the tubing, making it wider. You just need to keep going until it's wider than the hole, so it shouldn't take too long. And then when you've splayed it out quite a bit, you can swap to the flat side. Just to smooth it out a little bit. And there we go, little copper rivet. So I'll do a close-up of this in a second for you to see properly. But it's splayed out lovely and evenly on the top. It's nice and tight, perfect fit for the depth. And it's naturally splayed out on the inside because the ring mandrel was helping it splay and the reason it was able to do that is because it was a perfect fit to the depth of the metal if you have problems doing this technique it's probably going to be one of two things so either that you haven't cut your wire or your tubing quite tall enough so therefore there's not enough for it to poke out top and bottom and splay and hold things together or quite often it's the opposite so if you've cut it a tiny bit too long what tends to happen is instead of it splaying nicely on the top and bottom um, one of the sides at least will sort of fold over and make a bit of a mess um, so it's all about getting the right height for the depth which like I say the guide that I use is two mil extra or just below two mil more little cold connection rivet ring there we go so I've not done any clean up to this at all not even a sand but you can see the little rivets nice and neat Ooh, come on focus nice and neat and tidy and also nice and shiny from the hammering and a good depth Ooh, need to put this down so I can focus a good depth for the um, depth of the metal that was joining together so like I say 2 mil taller or just under two mil taller than the depth of all your metal that you're sticking together together so that you don't see loads of excess wire or tubing on that rivet 
but it's just a nice decorative way of joining things. Rivets and cold connections are particularly good for attaching things to your jewellery, which just wouldn't survive the heat of the blowtorch, so you could never solder them, such as this little beach pebble. So what I've done is I've drilled a hole through it, and the way you can do that is by using a little diamond-tipped burr, um, or a diamond drill bit. So what I did was I took my pebble, I put it onto some blue tack to give it a little bit of a buffer behind it so that when the drill bit came through it didn't go straight into the dish and then I made sure I did it submerged in water because if this gets hot so if the speed and friction builds up and this gets hot it will just crack which you don't want especially because you know potentially little bits could splinter and crack off and come towards your face so you need to make sure you're wearing eye protection um, and any machine that you're using if you're not doing it by hand you need to make sure the bit that's getting wet is nowhere near the machine's motor. So now I've got the two pieces that I want to join together, I want to rivet together and I've got the holes drilled in them that are exactly the same size as the tubing or wire that I want to use to rivet them. So remember from the last video it is so important that you have a really tight snug fit because you need to splay out the top of that tubing or wire for it to be able to grab the two elements or multiple elements that you're riveting together and if the hole is bigger than your wire that's way more metal that you have to push out and splay for them to be able to grip so tighter the better with the last one I just chopped it to size and the bottom of the rivet naturally splayed itself on the ring mandrel because the two things I was joining together were sat nice and tight and they were easy shapes that's the rain starting um, this time it's a lumpy bumpy thing so I'm going to show you how to rivet one side then measure and cut and then rivet the other side so I've got my tubing I've got my mitre jig or you could use a vise anything that's just going to let you hold on to it with it poking out about one mil high one mil or just less so just poking out above the surface of that little jig or vise and then I'm going to take my hammer again I'm going to take the cross pane hammer again and I'm going to do that hammering so I'm going to hammer one way and then flip it hammer the other way flip it hammer the other way until it starts to splay out I'm going to take it out and have a little look right, I want that to splay out a bit further it slipped in the jig so I'm just going to lift it back out so it's poking out a little bit and this time I'm going to make it a lot tighter so it doesn't slip. Back to the hammering, hammer one way and then the other. Smooth it out the flat side if you want. I'm going to take that out and check the fit, see if it needs splaying even more. Just grabbing it at the minute, but I think that can go a teeny tiny bit more. So back in, sticking out a tiny bit again. Nice and tight. Back to the hammering. So now I've splayed one end out, what I need to do is cut it roughly to size. So the first time I cut it, I'm just going to cut it a little bit bigger than it needs to be. And the reason being is the side that I've splayed out is the side that I want to have inside the ring band. And at the minute this is so long it is never going to thread all the way up and through <coughs> I mean, the inside of that ring band. So I'm just going to hold it really roughly and cut it smaller so that I'll be able to thread it into position. There we go. So hopefully that will now fit. Just a teeny bit long. 
I'm going to cut that down a tiny bit more because I did cut it quite a bit big. There we go. That's it on and attached. I'm going to thread this on. And again, I'm going to mark it to the height that I need it to be. So that is going to be one mil above the top of my stone. Like so. And then I can take this apart, cut it down to the right height. And remember, it's really important to use your saw and not your shears because you do not want to crush the tubing or the wire. So before threading it all together, just check then that your cut is nice and flat. If not, file it flat either by hand or in a mitre jig. Make sure there's no little burrs left behind. And then you're ready to attach them together. Like so. So now I'm going to thread it all onto my ring mandrel again and I'm ready to rivet that. So I'm going to move the camera angle so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. There we go. So it's supported on the ring mandrel. I've got my cross pane hammer. I'm going to hammer it one way. And then the other way on a cross action. Keep doing that. Until it's splayed out enough. That's getting there, it's looking good. But like I say, you don't need to use a cross pane hammer. If you've got a ball pane hammer, you can try that one. Or you can use the flat of the hammer. So I'm just giving it its last little flatten out and obviously if you're using something that isn't metal you just need to be careful not to hammer the actual thing too hard because you don't want to smash it. looking really good to me. There we go. One little riveted pebble ring. So again I'll do a little close-up so that you can see it and you can see how the inside came out in a little second. But I'm quite happy with that. There we go. One little riveted or cold connected beach pebble ring. And there's the little rivet on the inside. And you can see that's nice and smooth, it's not going to catch or snag when you're putting it on and off your finger, which is important, you wouldn't want it scratching and potentially cutting you when you're wearing it. And you can see that the rivet at the front is nice and uniform and shiny, even though I haven't done any clean up to it whatsoever. That's purely from the hammering and because it was the right length for the elements that were riveting together. But yeah, have a go. Let me know how you get on.